And welcome, everyone. I thought I'd just do a little attunement for all of us. As you're settling in and working out the technicalities. So let's um, close our eyes and settle into ourselves, into our center. Let your awareness come down into the core. And let's attune to the energy field of the delta and how the delta opens up this space for us to harmonize together. To harmonize these seven layers of our being, these seven notes, these seven colors, and maybe tune in just for a moment to those chakras, those colors inside your own being. And then open up that contemplation to include everyone else in this community and in this Delta experience. And feel the mystery of all those frequencies coming together. And allow them to come together in a harmony, a spontaneous harmony. And attune yourself to that harmony. Maybe you can feel it subtly pulsing through your body, bringing your own centers and your own inner being into alignment with that harmony. And we attune to the mysterious eighth city, the eighth octave, the divine note that brings all the other notes together. And not just this community, but then this harmony also expands to attune to higher harmonies with higher evolutions. And so we allow those higher evolutions and those higher harmonies also to become part of our harmony as a community, as a family, and deep within our own body. And feel that beautiful attunement of all these different energies coming into music coming into a beautiful mosaic a work of art made of living flesh a mandala of souls and the mystery of time and space come together for this moment, for this experience, to give us a glimpse into a future consciousness for humanity. 
And so let's finish by beaming out this harmony to all those we love and all those in our community, those who have passed away, those who are being born, those who are being married, all of the members of this community, those who are not present here right now, but are part of our hearts and part of this harmony. And then we beam it out further into the surrounding countryside, the towns and villages and cities. The whole of India, there's billions of people and beyond reaching into every corner of humanity around this globe. And all those coming into the form and going out of the form, we include them in this harmony. And those higher evolutions, those star beings, who are also part of this higher evolution. Right into the source, the source of all being, a single pure note of ecstasy, of bliss. And we bring that right into the core of our belly. And then everything becomes pure and simple and unified. And we can rest for a couple of minutes in that unity. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and maintain that sense of harmony and unity. And uh, Pia and I would love to welcome you to share with us anything you feel to share. We're going to just be here for you and with you and receive from you how this experience has been for you and Anything you feel you'd like to share? Yes, also a warm welcome from me. And it looks like we have some technological gremlins playing with us today. So Natasha is just joining from her phone and hopefully the sound will work better there. Okay, so we're going to restart Zoom on that, uh, on, the, on the main device.
So we're just sorting out the logistics here. And uh, for me, that's always a good time to pause and just be open to whatever is needed in the moment. Can you hear us now? We yeah. can hear you and we can see you. Yes, it's wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful attunement, Richard. <laughs> Thank you, Stefano and Ka Ka Rajiv. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano and Rajiv have been running around with all the technical stuff and, and thank you for bringing it together. So this, as you said in the beginning, Richard, the seven weeks will go really quick and they've, before we know, know it, here we are. Huh? And uh, from the feedback that I've received, everyone felt like, Oh my God, we needed one week, one month for every position. One week was a bit short. Um, so a few people have already sent in their, their um, uh, little synopsis of, of the experience, which is really lovely to have. And, and I'm sure there's a lot more that's coming in. It's just that we have just about entered our integration week and uh, some people are still finishing, uh, so it will come uh, slowly, slowly, slowly. But today we have a chance to share uh, live. And um, so we're just going to pass the mic around for whoever feels like sharing. And then there could be questions attached to it or maybe not. And Richard and Pia will just have that you know, exchange based on whatever is shared. We also have a couple of group videos that would be nice to be shared here in, in, in the common space. Um, there are a few and we may not have time for it because I know many people need to also go early. Uh, so we'll, we'll just start with one and end with one um, and take it from there. So maybe um, we start with the first, Raji, we can start with that first video. Uh, yeah. So you can see it, right, Pia? Oh, we're right now share. we can't see, but I don't think it's shared yet. So let's it's just, coming. yeah, we could before, so I'm trusting we can again. So this is group four. They did a lovely job putting their, uh, everyone's done a wonderful job, but we, yeah. Yes, thank you. Hmm, so Delta has been for me um, a journey that's made the intangible more, more tangible, more palpable somehow where the magic became more, more real with a lot of synchronicity, a lot of amazing things happening. And, and at the same time, also the shadow, sometimes very real as well, very tangible. <laughs> and it opened doors for new possibility of, of seeing, of understanding, of, of being and embracing life in its fullness. I'm very grateful that we had the opportunity to do this delta of collectively becoming more aware. And it were truly seven weeks of deep, insightful contemplation that I would not have wanted to miss. Thank you. My name is Amy. And I first want to say how thankful I am for this experience of the Delta. I signed up to connect, really to connect. And I have to say that 
I have had very sweet connections with、uh, the Delta as a whole and with my Delta group. And if I was going to choose one word, I would use I would say magic. The Delta has been full of magic. Thank you. This experience of the Delta has nudged me little by little to trust in the process, to honor all feelings and to not judge them or myself for having them. I also feel these contemplations are a very important means to revive ourselves and the world around us. So I'm really grateful for you having shared this process with us to help us uncover. Um, the wisdom that we all have in us. Thank you. What Delta has given me is some space, awareness, and I guess choice in the microseconds of instinctive reactions. Just a little new. Possible way of being, and that's a big gift. I am grateful for this experience. I found the Delta to be、um, quite an intense、uh, time, and I was able to explore different parts of my being that I probably wouldn't have otherwise, and in such a lovely, supportive group. So I really appreciate getting to know the. Seven people in my group and the overall experience. So thank you. Hello. So I have appreciated the regular spiritual practices, and、uh, especially the sharing of our humanity with a group of very inspiring people. After that, I'm very grateful. So Delta has been for me.、Uh... So that was Group Four. Thank you for that. <laughs> Who would like to start? I'm going to choose. <laughs> Well, for me, I am very grateful for this experience of sharing. Where they, you can hear, yeah. Okay. So at the end, I I would say that the most meaningful for me it was to share nothing, nothing, with a group of people that I know since years. And we are always engaged in rhythms, duties, so whatever. And suddenly, the space, the elastic space of time and 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 space, <laughs> that it was sometimes short, sometimes long. You were lost on that.、Uh, we wanted more time, but at the same time, it was that elasticity for me put us in a creative space where there is was there was not any intention. No, no pre-plan, and where and to to share together with our sisters and brothers that we used to share here.、Uh, I think it's a beautiful starting point. No, to I was feeling also at some point、uh, that maybe if we can meet together in a meeting, everything will be more easy now without words because we are sharing something that is not. Related to anything, <laughs> and for me, that creative space、uh, is very important and could be very fruitful and helping for our situation.、Uh, 
Thank you. Yeah, it really uh, gave us a very different format in which we shared in, in uh, you know, from our normal way in which we um, have our exchanges in the community. And at the same time, it was quite, um, you know, the, it, it went deep and was very, you know, uh, an intimate space, really. And so somehow this whole thing about the positions was very interesting because um, I had a lot of feedback also that everybody felt like that they magically fell into the right position to start with. And I was wondering, Richard, if you could tell us a little bit or Pia also about the, you know, the partnering and, and the, the, the geometry of it and, and these, because there was also this sense of the person who came in front of you made space in that position that you entered afterwards. So the, the one who fo you follow, um, there was uh, that kind of, um, you know, something about it that magically all fit the sequence of it. So, you know, what uh, if thought or not thought, what, <laughs> what went into that would be nice to hear from you. Yeah, thank you, Natasha, and thank you um, for for the lovely video and and just for being present with us <clears throat> and for experimenting with this. I think you know the delta is all about rhythm, and uh, it was not preconceived by me. I didn't think it through or work it out. It just kind of arrived, and then and then uh, we get to see it in action and the rhythm of of the movement of the dance of the auras and like you said one person clearing a space and then the next person stepping into that space and the continuity of consciousness that's shared and the the continuity of stories unraveling um subtly in that space is 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 deeply mysterious i think and it's it's a musical process so it um in that sense it, you know we can un, we can unpick it with logic but it just has its own music and it, its own harmonics and dissonances of course that some of you mentioned already like some of the shadow material that comes up and um uh, and then creates extra interest in the music um and then some pieces of pieces of shadow or pieces of um you know dissonance that come up that kind of then have to get resolved in some way musically you know and so it, if you look at it as music you suddenly realize it's it does it, it takes away the charge you know of the negative of the of the low frequency or or the thing that we, the suffering because then the suffering also becomes part of the music um so i think that's what it does that's what the delta has sh really shown me like this through the metaphor of music um that we're moving in this dance all the time anyway with or without the delta we're still moving in the same divine rhythms and i think it's funny that we live in these weeks you know we've constructed these seven day cycles in many cultures and um and and sometimes the delta seems fast you know to us like you said like you'd like seven months of course it would be great to have seven months, but then it would become like a deep retreat. The beauty of the seven weeks is that it is fast and therefore you, it's every day. It, it takes place in the every day instead of being a, you know, a big spiritual thing. It's too fast to kind of hook onto and, you know, you have to keep flowing with it. You have to keep moving. So I think that's, um, that's why I think one of its powers is the fact that it has it is fast um, or it seems to move fast. Um, and then so many people in the Jinkies community have have done lots of deltas. They go around again and then again and then and, and it's when you go around again, I think it starts to slow down um, because you begin to relax into the rhythm and you don't have to think about it or work it out so much. Would you say, Pia? I was exactly having that thought. So I would say, yes, that, that is the beauty of it. And the more deltas we do, that's my experience, is the deeper and the more 
natural, the, the rhythm flows, it, it becomes embodied in a different way. Because it's true, the first time I was thinking about, oh, now I, I, I was focusing mentally also, at the, now it's this position, now it's this position, and trying to be aware of what was happening in my life and keeping it on. And after a few rounds, that rhythm is flowing on its own. And I don't mentally have to engage in it because I already, I step into a rhythm. I step into an energy, a quality that's already deeply embodied, both in me and within the collective. And, and I want to sort of on a more, um, just an, a realization I had after several deltas, but there's something very supportive in that rhythm. So on a very human, humanity level of following in somebody's footsteps in a way I follow somebody and there's no coincidence here. There's also a, a beautifully orchestrated synchronicity in who I follow, who I partner with at certain times and who is in a way having my back, who follows behind me. So there's this holding supportive energy throughout the whole seven weeks. And as for the starting positions, now I'm in the privileged position of receiving a lot of the feedback and have followed a lot of deltas, particularly in the early days where, where we were still exploring and I got, I, I was more deeply engaged with most of the deltas. And the number of times people have said like, it's uncanny, I can't believe that it's, that I start in the exact right position. And these are randomly generated. So there's something that, that, that is so beautiful and so magical in that randomness of where we start and that there is a deeper personal individual um, message in the starting position that's underlying the whole delta. But it's very beautiful the way to really become aware. And I think it takes, I, I've become, for each delta, I've become increasingly more aware both of the power and the beauty and the magic of that randomness, which is in no way random. It's just perfect for each person. So I think that's what I wanted to add. But thank you. Thank you for the beautiful sharing. And, and I look forward also to more to come. Thank you. Well, I can also say thank you for the experience. And one thing that I really enjoy, especially being in Auroville and meeting to listen to each other every week, is that we all have passed by the same little talks of every number of every position. And each one was grasping something different. And for me, this really was like making me realize how is the, the richness of being together because what you can see, what you can grasp, and for you is so clear from your experience, I didn't even hear it. And each one is uh, a different uh, contribution, no? And then make it so much richer, no? And there is not that this one the right or the wrong or the, it's just complementing and making it complete, no? From different angles. And that for me was really a mystery, you know? Every week we were listening to people. The first, actually the first week I thought this is going to be very boring. <laughs> every week we meet with the same seven points <laughs> and everybody will be repeating. And no, every week was completely different. And I find it's really it's a, a very beautiful, a reminder that our differences, it's actually something that enriches us, that uh, doesn't need to, to make us fight for which is the, the truest. It's just help us to see from different angles and then to get to, to the oneness together. So it was a beautiful yeah, experience on this side. And I want to give thanks to all of you for this possibility to explore that. Thank you.
Uh, often I was, I couldn't help talking to our fellow Aurovillians who did not, had not chosen to do the Delta this time and uh, share my enthusiasm. And then always the question, what is this Delta? And I ended up saying magic was often part of it, my tentative explanation. Um, for me, I think it sums up as a sacred journey. It is truly deeply sacred. And uh, it has so many dimensions, of course. I think also the privilege we had of doing it as an intentional community who are living together, that really added so much. I can't imagine how it would have been. Would be interesting too, to do it online. But the fact of being together, for instance, in, in uh, the group I was in, we had three of us were, um, were in couples where the other partner of the couple was in the same group. I mean, there were like two groups. We had parallel. Yeah, we had three couples across the groups, which was quite interesting. Never found out exactly what, uh, <laughs> what the magic behind that was. But yeah, it was sort of intriguing. And um, it went, the fact of being physically together as community members, as brothers and sisters in this very intimate space of oneness that it creates added so much because just one example, for instance, um, one of us was in position seven, which was about basically learning to trust, trust to the divine grace and to, to be led beyond one's thinking and calculating beyond what one think is possible and uh, shared of concrete material difficulties, financial and everything, and another one was in position one, which has to do with sort of sorting out physical stuff and bringing balance into one's, including into one's finances. And then it was so obvious that those finances were meant to flow where they were needed. And um, so I think this kind of very concrete magic that is created, where it results in projects in new things uh, happening in grace being materialized was really very special for me to the fact that we did it together in community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. And I'd like to say that I'm just like, this is my highest aspirations and hopes for, for the Delta in community. So I'm delighted that it's already beginning to work its magic so powerfully so thank you thank you everybody hi this is shiva here so i mean this was an awesome journey actually like to start with i would actually say like you know two is company three is a crowd but then seven people meeting week after week and uh, those discussions and as they said, like the perspectives varied, like I was in position five and when subsequently somebody else came to position five, what they conceived as, as the intricate aspects that were, and, uh, I would say it was a lovely piece of literature as well. Like, you know, quite a lot of, uh, uh, coherence. I mean, it was lovely to read as well. Um, quite enjoyed the journey actually, like, and I thought it really caught people together. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known these seven people in Oroville. So it was like we all came together and it was quite an opportunity. Maybe you should go on another flight as well. <laughs> Thank you, Shiva. Thank you. Hi, my name is Satya. Um, I must say that I was extremely grateful to participate in this program. I was actually hesitating whether I should be part of it or not. When I came for the first meeting, I wasn't sure what this Delta is all about. But uh, yeah, really then diving into, into it and, and being as a group, it was just amazing experience. For me, each theme or the Jinki that I worked on was really resonating with me on, the, on that particular weeks and it was just a beautiful journey 
and I had an extremely beautiful team actually very all of us were very true and open and very uh, nice sharing from deep so it was just beautiful and um, for me it was like even opening opening up myself deeper inside and feeling and hearing my inner self which i never thought about it actually it gave me this opportunity to really listen to myself and to go into myself and align myself especially with the difficult and challenging moment in oroville where this thing came up and it was just a breakthrough of of all this and uh, finding something beautiful so thank you so much <laughs> yeah thank you yeah for me it's uh... hello it's working yeah it was like after a very tough year i felt um lifted up and carried i felt like i was being lifted up out of a muddy very muddy mindset and um and it was something that i wished for many 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 years ago when i came to orville that we would have this kind of ab ability to share that deep with each other and being on that that friendly level while we are doing our own inner growing and reflection and now moments of aha oh this is how it works so i'm very grateful and i i truly enjoyed my companion and i had this um, feeling really like i was flying over all these difficulties as, as being carried nothing really really brought me down anymore after i started this was really a flying a very graceful flying and working together so i'm very um I'm very happy for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It, it makes me think uh, like it would be beautiful for the Delta to be spontaneously moving through your community um, in an ongoing way so that people can drop in and drop out of a Delta. We can do it for seven weeks and then take a break. And then there's always another one going on somewhere. And when it's needed, you can, you can pick it up as a way of connecting again into that space I, I feel like it would be a really beautiful thing way of considering to use it the spontaneous way because it doesn't have some doesn't have any pressure to it uh, but it would always be there present when you need it and I'd like to just add to that that there is that you first pioneers you have created the in a way, the foot, the not the footsteps, the flight path. You created the, uh, the an energetic container for other deltas to follow into. So there's already a very because there's so many deltas flying in unison at once. You created a powerful collective field for the for the delta to drop into. And I think that the idea of and we've talked a little about it. We'll see how that continues but definitely my sense is that there's you that there's interest in continuing the deltas in Oroville and I think some people who've done who, who may continue to do two three four many deltas and others will just step in or dip in and do one and then come back maybe years later but that there will always be the energy and the quality of the delta uh, holding and and moving through the collective because it's not only affecting those who are doing it, it's, it's, it'll be spreading out like Richard imagined or envisioned in the attunement. I, I'm convinced that that's happening on a very real level. So yeah, thank you. And thank you to all of you who are courageous pioneers. Hi, my name is Elisa. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, yeah, I, it was it was quite uh, quite an amazing experience. Uh, I had uh, I had 
uh, knowledge and experience with the Gene Keys uh, 10 years back, which already touched me deeply and accompanied me on my, on my path. And the Delta was really like having a, a blanket, uh, like a sacred blanket, which uh, really magnified what I cared about being very in intimate connection to myself, to others. Um, and somehow my outer life completely shifted. Uh, I was in a very extremely busy schedule uh, when I started and I created a, a complete vacuum of my circumstance, outer circumstances uh, since few days. And it came very naturally sensing that a deeper movement, a deeper expression of myself wants to be wants to be, I don't know, wants to emerge, basically. And um, so it was, it was, yeah, a very deep sense with myself and I could feel the Delta flying over Orville or over the planet. And it, it felt really a movement that feels so um, sacredly needed at this point of time, whether in Orville or in the world. And, um, and really with the, for me, the, the deep uh, wish to, to touch the expansion around the contractions we can have either individually within myself or, or collectively. So thank you. It has been a, an amazing companionship to, to really deepen my, my experience. And uh, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon uh, for us. I think for you also now. Good morning still. <laughs> Yeah, I also want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this experience. I had no idea um, seven weeks ago or a little bit more than seven weeks ago what I was signing for. It just kind of appeared at a moment in my life where it was exactly the right thing <laughs> without thinking much. And I'm looking forward to continue doing this Delta. Thank you, Pierre, for your proposition. It would be amazing to continue having it in Oroville and I know many people who want to join and someone to take a break. I also felt that this rhythm of changing every week was, for me, it was amazing because even at the beginning I felt it was too short. But as you say, it's a creative uh, opportunity. We don't need to go too deep, but by the repetition, each time we go deeper. And I felt very much that one position was flowing into another, so it was not like a completely changing from one thing to another. It was a deepening, even within the same Delta. It was also, uh, it's only the beginning of this amazing experience that so many of us have uh, chosen to participate in this very community at this moment of time where there is a big crisis. And as Richard said at the moment, you know, in, at the beginning, sorry, there is this orchestra and some sounds may not sound very beautiful, but they are being lifted up by the rest of the orchestra. And that was really, really helpful, helpful for many of us to look up, you know, to look at the, to fly together in a direction that's toward the light, you no know, more beautiful because what's happening in the ground is not that beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, when I, when I received the Delta um, at some time, many years ago, in the middle of the night, just arrive in my consciousness. Um, they, the, the voice that came, it wasn't really a voice, but it was, I knew it was from that other higher transcendent angelic, I call it angelic evolution. And I was told that a Delta, a seven is in, in the, in the world of the angels is one unit is one angelic unit is made of seven. And that in the, in the, in that in that evolution there is no other number but seven there are no other numbers only sevens and um and so it's a different construction of reality um so being in a delta is like being in the cell 
of an angel's body. What's it like to be in an angel's body? That's the that's the insight I was shown. Anyway, I share it with you as perhaps inspiration. What is it like to be a part of a whole, whole much wider organism um, that is has a vast consciousness? So I, I, I think that was a, an inspiring idea for me. Hi, uh, my name is Alok, and um, I just want to say that I joined the Delta to, you know, look for some tools for developing myself because I said I can't do anything for the community unless I build up my own capacities and my own way of actually um, growing. So that's that was my intention and how I got in. And I have to tell you that meeting in person was one of the best things that we could have done to start off with this Delta process. And so I was really grateful that we, we could actually sit in the same room and watch each other as well as pair up in the Matramandir gardens and, you know, have such a wonderful place like Oroville to actually share this. So we were blessed with a very supportive tool and an amazing environment for this journey. And what I got out of it at the end was during the process, I got certain connections and insights and tools to work on a soul plan. And this is something that I had never thought about that, you know, I'd get from this. And um, so I've been working on why my soul has come on this planet and what is my purpose actually here. And that was the very most powerful thing that I got from the Delta. So I thank you for giving us this tool and um, i'm looking forward to you know other types of uh, collaboration and deltas and all to to take it further but i'm very grateful thank you thank you Alok. i am bani and we had uh, i am in a group which have uh, finalized so the eighth week i was lucky uh, because on seven, we had four men. I think we are the only group with four, <laughs> which is so rare. As you see, there is much more women here also. And four men were sharing very deeply. And it was a group which I didn't know. I think most people uh, didn't know each other or vaguely, like, you know, in Oroville, you know the name. And I can say, in a way, we... It, I was so surprised because of the Oroville environment. Sometimes you don't dare to go uh, so deep, also to share your emotion, or you stay maybe on the spiritual plane, you know, like <laughs> on the mental plane, whatever. But but you don't go. And this was not the case. People went really deep, deep, deep into their emotion, and uh, even knowing that they will meet on the road again and. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's part of our life. That's why everybody loves so. <laughs> But, uh, and I, I could see that uh, we finish uh, uh, Thursday. And then on Thursday, you see what I felt and I was sharing with my group is that we started with a group. We didn't know each other. And we really ended up with a group of friends, a really deep friend, no? Uh, because the, the sharing has been so deep in a way. The trust and the space and the presence of the people was quite amazing, no? Um, I was also lucky here. We were lucky in our group. Someone hosted it and nicely with biscuit and all in each time. So we were. But my, I, I concre concretely, I would like to know after from you too, because for example, some people in, in my group will feel like uh, going on and some feel not ready now. I mean, um, I mean, going on, most of us maybe more in one month or two, but, but some not. So how after you, you start, when it's not your old group moving on uh, to add new people, I don't know practically how to do it. And also in one of your videos, Richard, Rich, you shared that there is a, a, even a larger, collective experience 
of uh, three groups, no, of seven, so 21 people. And then you focus on uh, more on something to, to concrete, at least my understanding of what you were sharing, of concretizing something. And I will be at least to know, uh, very interested, I don't say now, now, but if all of you could use it like that for uh, looking at it for its uh, new organization. No, Right now we are looking, I mean, we keep improving our organization, but obviously if we are in this situation, which I believe some people share, Natasha share with you, we show that there is improvement really needed in our organization group. Um, uh, so that it's, I thought because there is, you know what, maybe what I felt in Oroville that many of us, especially the people who are here, have been really deeply working on themselves. And when the situation came up even more deeply and went really into their inner yoga, uh, whichever way they are uh, doing it, because they felt, uh, yeah, if we are going through that, then there is also things, I mean, there is reason, no? Deeper reason. But we didn't maybe bring even the, we are, as, at least that's a per, very personal thing I am sharing now. I felt that we are where we are in Oroville because we ma didn't manage to bring say, the, uh, our insight of where we are at within individually to the collective and to the collective uh, uh, organization and to the collective life in general. We did in very small level, which makes uh, the beauty of Oroville and in many aspects, but there is, that's where there is still a need, a lot of improvement. And I, when I heard your 21 people working on project, I said, oh, that could be a very great tool to, to work on our organization. So if you, if you have time today, I don't know when, to give that feedback on that, I will be very grateful. And thank you for was this beautiful offering. Thank you so much. I, I'll let Pierre talk about the 21, but I'm I, I'm inspired by what you said. And I think um, you know, the foundation in of of a harmonic, harmonious community is this friendship, you know, to to weave together more people in different friendships. And and you can do a delta in a in a business or in an organization. And it mixes the soil from the top with the soil from the bottom. So the you know, so it begins to change the way hierarchies operate. And it begins to kind of because you're you're putting together people at different levels that normally don't always communicate with each other. And because of the random, the so-called random nature of the delta, it puts exactly the right people in the right places at the right time. And then in in answer to your question about continuity of groups some groups decide to stay together spontaneously and go deeper with the same seven over and over and i know groups who have been doing it for years the same group and create such powerful friendships even across cultures and other ones uh re you know kind of go back into the base and then come up again with a different configuration or maybe with three from the original and then four new people and lots of different again it's a it's like creating compost um in a community and you so you have to keep mixing and blending from different places in the community and then the community slowly starts to feel its own coherence as a whole that's what the delta is for it's it's its purpose is to create coherence and this harmony in any community through through people using it and coming into it and coming out of it and then forming new groups and some of them staying with the same group but it it's completely up to the intuition and the and the heart of each of each group so if three want to go on for example and and four don't take that as also a a kind of orchestration from above <laughs> And that's a part of grace uh, at work. And so you then either find another three or another four, and Pia can help explain this, but the logistics. Um, and uh, and then you have this constant mixing and blending of different layers in the community. And you have more friendships being built 
in more unlikely places sometimes. And that creates such a powerful community stability. Um, yeah. Anyway, so, so I, I, I'm very inspired by seeing you, you all do this and I hope it, I hope the experiment continues and you begin to feel more of this coherence, um, coming in. But, um, Pia, you, you might want to talk about the, the, the star. Yeah, I'll say a little. I also just want to say a few words about this because, first of all, I, I mentioned courage before, and I want to again say thank you to all of you because be coming together in a community where you will continue like to to be vulnerable, open, deep, authentic in your sharings in a community where you will continue to meet each other in your daily life and on the street that you said in the future actually takes more courage than coming together with a group of strangers across continents online. Um, and yes, you can you can continue in any configuration. If a team, if any of your teams decide to continue for another round as a team, I encourage or invite you to con to go to simply start in the same starting positions so that you in a way continue the journey where you stopped and go deeper in the same pattern. It's, it's not a must, but it's, it's an invitation that, to explore that. And I've experienced that that can be really powerful and deep. If it's not, as Richard said, it's, a, it's orchestrated from another realm. If some of you in a team or even you can get together with one person from seven teams and have a completely new set of, uh, you can do any, any kind of configurations, then you will generate new starting positions. So, so there's different ways of doing that. And as for the star, we will this spring trial test the very first star ever. It's not been, it's not been tried in practice yet. We do ask that people have done three deltas before they, they step into the star of consciousness, which is the constellation of the three of the 21 people. And as I see it and understand it, the reason for that is that the first three rounds in the delta, there's a personal deepening and there's still, we're still being deeply turned and composted and there's more layers and levels of of also the both the collect the harmonizing within the team and also in the collective when we move to the star when we come to the star of consciousness when we come together in in 20 in a in a team of 21 in a in a different constellation we are ready to really focus on the on philanthropy, we are ready to give generously of our heart so that the focus becomes more outside on the practical. But in a way, the soil needs to be well nourished, well compassed, well watered before we are ready to build, to seed, so, so that the seeds of the projects, the creative projects that emerge out of the star of consciousness is the, the soil is rich and fertile. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, so I would imagine that within, uh, probably, hopefully, when, when we have had our first experiences and tested the first uh, star of consciousness or two, we may be ready for you to, for some of you to step into that configuration. Yeah, thank you. And it's a very different the star. It doesn't have the seven week time constraint. It has no time constraint. And you land in a position and you stay in that position the whole time. And and it has a different configuration. So each position is is with a different team. And then you have four teams that operate together. Um with and it's it's another whole, it's it's very different. Um, but there is a rhythm that rolls through. And on a you know on a on a weekly and monthly way, but the uh, the the challenge of the star is to manifest something in the form, in the concrete form, to bring something into form. So, uh, so it's a it's a big it's a journey together, and um, I think we don't know yet. So we're going to, as Pierre says, we're going to trial it. But it, the, in theory, it looks uh, 
like it could be a really interesting and has its own challenges, um, different challenges. So my name is Anand Shanti, and I just want to say I'm really excited about what's already happened uh, for me. And I would like to continue and to do some more Delta uh, with maybe other people, all the people in my group who are not in the same level of wanting to continue. Or uh, I also felt that hearing about other groups, they are quite different from the group I was in. And I would like to be in a different group and see how it works with a different six people. And I'm just uh, thrilled. When I got into it, I knew already just from Natasha's invitation that I wanted to go into it. I didn't know what will happen. But I had a little experience with Jinkies a few years back for the uh, first four numbers. And I really love what you have to say. I've been reading as well as listening to you every number that I've had for my position. And so I'm just thrilled with what you're sharing. And I felt before I did this, I've been here 14 years, but I felt there are so many people in Orville that I do not know. And so many people I would like to know. So this gives us a way to get to know each other. That's really valuable here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just going to repeat what I just said. It's very funny because on the roof we have actually lines of sevens and therefore and we have deltas of sevens. So it's the perfect place somehow. <laughs> So many things have been said that resonate deeply, I think, with all of us, especially if I felt that. Um, the absolute right place to start, for me, it was like a, such, a, such a deep experience. Um, also, from my side, um, they had been for some time longing to get into a deeper space of sharing with the uh, fellow Orwellians. And it was always possible on an individual basis, but not on a collective one. And this was such a beautiful breakthrough where we have started doing it collectively now. And uh, I feel this is the moment to change our way of being and behaving as a collectivity to really get into what we are meant to be doing here. So thank you very much. Uh, you. It did feel, it did feel uh, at times um, in some of the sessions coming in like a student coming in who has not done his homework <laughs> because life was very pressed and couldn't always prepare everything. But um, many times it was like, here you are, you hear the three words and you start reflecting and things start falling in place. It was a wonderful experience that we didn't have to always work for it. It also carried us. That was a wonderful experience for me. And uh, Richard, thank you for your beautiful sharings. I love hearing whatever you say, whichever context you say things. Uh, I feel a deep resonance from the way you explain things to my upbringing, which is in Sri Ashram. So a deep resonance and deep gratitude for you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. They, they, uh, I don't, a question for all of you to contemplate <clears throat> when you go after this is, do you see where the Delta is an allegory for the story of incarnation itself? That's a good question. The mechanics of incarnation and, and with a beginning, a middle and an end that then flows into another beginning, a middle and an end. And, um, and where you begin is critical. When you begin is critical. 
which angle you come in and then how you flow with the story that unfolds. Uh, it's a very profound thing to consider, I think. I have a question that came up in our group. And the question was, what is the final position that we end up? It came for a couple of us. And uh, yeah, do you have anything to say on that? Do you mean the, the eighth position? No, the seventh. Seventh. The seventh, yes. What is it? Are you asking? I think what uh, Daria is saying, it's really interesting because for me, it was very pertinent. It's the position you end up on. So I, for instance, I ended in position three, which is gene key six, which is my life's work. And it's the one gene key, excuse me, Richard, which I still haven't been able to embrace. <laughs> I so struggle with it. <laughs> I think I need another three lifetimes, but I shouldn't say that because I'll be stuck with it. But... Um, yeah, it's wonderful to hear all these sharings because for me, this Delta was super challenging. It was really tough and beautiful, really beautiful. Um, we were one of the few Deltas in out of the 12 who weren't randomly chosen. I kind of felt like the immediate community in which I was living in needed to have we want i was pushing them actually to have a delta experience which maybe is part of the problem um although not everyone participated and those who participated did it willingly and we had the grace of a few others who joined us which was wonderful to have that balance um and it's incredible because i steward this piece of land and we have a community there and I have stepped down from that stewardship after this Delta because, and which is really necessary. It's really part of our transformation here in Oroville, where we are moving into a different organization. And this whole, it's interesting that that's also what's coming like from this part of the secretary and, you know, about stewardship and all, but this came in a very different way that we, we need to change this kind of hierarchical system that we have and it needs to function in a in a in a different organization which we are yet to discover but you see it was very connected to my last position to come back to your question <laughs> and it's kind of left me in that space so i started with 5 which is which i was so easily kind of you know just flowed into because uh, I don't know, I, I, I've always enjoyed being a mother and a nourisher and you know, that, that, that fifth position is all about that nurturing. But this sixth position, the sixth gene key, third position is really a challenge for me and I need to sit with it and for me to sit with it through the integration week and through into my next delta whenever it will be for now i really need some space and time from the delta is quite an interesting um space to be in and and i um you know there's been so much change coming out of of this experience for me just practically in terms of just like elisa said you know in terms of the roles that we take on in the community and change of scene and uh, it's so big that it, there's a lot there to settle. And it's it came out of that last position. But uh, if you can say something, that will also be nice about the last position. Well, I think, I'm sure Pia can as well, but I'll be brief. Um, my my insight there is that the it's the, it's like, it's about closure and completion. And so um, the, until you feel a sense of completion and closure with that key that you ended with, the Delta is calling you back again, you know, it wants to call you back to go deeper until you've completed that cycle that you began and you, and you have, it doesn't mean it has to be perfect, but it means you have to have some sense of, okay, I I'm, I'm done with that cycle. 
it's like the end of it's like our final test in our incarnation you know what's the final test of our incarnation um it's it's an interesting another interesting thing to contemplate what will you be given you know which which kind of leela will you be given um to as your final test um and then when you've done that final test your job here in this phase in this cycle is complete and you can leave and and you know but if you leave it un if you leave it incomplete incomplete you're going to have to come back like the same with incarnation you're going to have to come back and finish that test that you didn't finish in this incarnation because it's still left there in the field and and so you so you're so it's a, it's about completion in that way completion of a of a cycle of of some form and that can be taken very deeply in your in your consciousness what when did that cycle begin truly not just in the delta but like where in your life did that cycle begin and and what do you need to do to finish it in some way to to arrive i hope i hope that makes sense pia you may have something in to add i'm sure actually that answer it <laughs> pretty profoundly and all around and and i have personally experienced um with the dalsa exactly that that there is something also the last position leads into the first position if you continued in the same rhythm so they are interlinked they're the like if you look at cycles or it, it, you go higher on the spiral so that ties in with what richard said the incarnation cycles are what we still need and it's interesting that it's also your life's work so there's a there's a there's a connection there and i mean obviously is that not the case for everybody in a way this may also answer some of the the previous question around why some people will continue together as an intact team because then and why it's in in encouraged to continue in the same rhythm so that you will go into so you will from your ending position you will go back to your starting position but at an at a deeper level so you have that opportunity to but next time or the last time you come back to that sixth that third position or the sixth jinky you will have that sense of you transmuted whatever it is that is so challenging that you come here to heal and transform on some level and then you can step in so so there's like the bigger incarnation cycles and there are also rhythms and cycles of beginnings and endings completions in our daily life in different parts different um life cycles within the bigger cycle uh i mean there's the natural run from childhood into adolescence and and so on but there are also other smaller ones even though they can be very profound and and have a lot of replication implications but there are always cycles within bigger cycles and and i think i feel that's what the delta symbolizes so beautifully and i i've shared this with many of you but after my third delta where we did go like three rounds in the same like through the same constellation i was ready to leave fint one after nearly 30 years of living in community and i was like oh really <laughs> so i've come to a completion of my service there which was also challenging a lot of the time and very beautiful and very rewarding but that is a cycle in a way or a symbolism of the of the ending position of the delta so i hope that answered some of it and also encourage so, like to really for each of you to listen to some of you will feel i'm ready and you shared that i'm ready for another delta because you are in in a way in a journey where you are ready to to go back and go deeper and others may need to sit with this and really integrate for this to complete outside of the delta and then you can come back at another time and start somewhere else for another cycle yeah i think that's what i want to say about this thank you Is there somebody else who'd like to share? Should we 
um, look at our, we have one more um, video from one of the group. What was your group number? Two, two. group two. It's, it's a special one that, that will help us to, to bring this to a closure and, and a note of celebration. And then we have some cake and tea and um, we'll keep sending all our um, feedback to you and you'll get the whole story and we'll have another wave and we'll meet again. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we, we have a... <laughs> but our plan is changing because our first number one position just flew off fasting. Uh, so the idea and invitation was that there's a music at the back of this uh, little recording that we have that builds up. And I'm a strong believer that uh, it's really important to bring what we're doing actually to anchor our spirituality in the earth and in the compass and in these bodies. And we've been sitting here for an hour and a half, uh, most of us. So the idea is that through this presentation, there's going to be text running up and somewhere there's going to be voice recording. As you're reading at some point, you get up and you actually kind of move a little bit and maybe towards the end when the presentation is over, that we actually move through the space. There is the music still continue for the next few minutes and actually look at this other Delta co-flyers that's been not in your group, but have been part of other 11 groups. So this is just an invitation. And our divas or my idea, and they all kind of agreed that one by one we come up, but uh, our first number one uh, flew off. <laughs> so let's see with our second and third, how we go, we'll see what happens. But yes, at least at some point when there's a voice recording, the music goes a little more rhythmic. It's very slow. It's just kind of feeling the body and feeling all this that we've been sharing. So that's the little wild, far reaching idea. <laughs>
appreciate and I'm very grateful for the contemplations and inquiry that were taking place as the backdrop of my active life during this seven to eight weeks. I enjoy the broadness that the jinkies and the delta positions uh, offer. It also does indeed require a lot of patience and gentleness, particularly when things go intense or when nothing so-called happens. I began in the position four, um, transparency of the heart and traumas, and uh, I'm ending in position five. And I relate so much to both of those and many, several other positions. I related least with position six, uh, where I was kind of blank. And at the same time, after looking back at it, it almost seemed like this way of being in a no mind space, so to speak, was actually part of it. But I'm not quite sure about it. Maybe just my storytelling ability tells that. Um, yes, something related to position five that I've been experiencing, I think, over the past uh, several weeks, maybe five weeks by now, or six even, after initial challenges, that there's something happening with time. There, My days are so full with teaching, and then on top of it, other appointments and commitments. Yet, uh, there is plenty of time. In my courses, there is extra time for practice and spaciousness. So, something definitely happened with time through the generosity and giving and sharing. And I'm really, really appreciating that. And I'm really so much aware how this is like a phenomenon that is here. And it keeps continuing. And the last thing is the journey that we have done together as a group, and I hope as a larger community with having 12 groups. I enjoyed enormously meeting with my team of six plus me, and meeting this community members in different ways, like following somebody as they pass the position before me or somebody coming after me, uh, creating depth and connection and building community in this way. And I really want and I wish that many of us keep continuing with more Delta journeys. I'm so grateful, Richard and Pia, and your community for gifting this to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.